Literally for months now, I've been coming on here and telling you that the WWE has a major problem with WrestleMania 31, more specifically with the main event for that show. And the problem being is that they didn't have a main event for WrestleMania 31. And I think now that we're only a few days away from WrestleMania 31, the reality has sunk into everyone, and they clearly see what I've been talking about for months now. And that is, the WWE doesn't have a main event for WrestleMania 31. And this is a problem. This is a major significant problem. All these plans about getting a guy ready to have him take over that mantle, become the new face of the WWE, all of those plans that have been laid out over the course of a year now, uh, look for not. This looks like an impending disaster coming up Sunday night at Levi Stadium for WrestleMania 31. Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. I can't remember the last time I ever laughed at a WrestleMania main event. The thought of it, seeing the promos for it, hearing about it, it makes me laugh. And I can't remember ever having that feeling. Like, not even WrestleMania 27 with uh, Miz defending against John Cena. Because there were other elements in play there that at least provided some intrigue that didn't make me laugh out loud about it, so to speak. When I look at WrestleMania 31 in this main event, there really are no redeeming qualities whatsoever. It basically has become exactly what I told you it was going to be about two and a half, three months ago and have been repeatedly beating that drum for throughout 2015. Now, a lot of people, a lot of you will come on here and try to blame it on just one individual and channel your hatred towards Roman Reigns in a way that makes it seem like he's the biggest problem. He's the most significant problem. In fact, the only problem with this main event at WrestleMania 31. Well, you're wrong. You're dead fucking wrong. Because there are so many different issues at play here when it comes to what's wrong with WrestleMania 31. Roman Reigns is just one contributing part, and I might even argue not even the biggest contributing factor, why it looks like this main event at Mania is going to suck donkey dong. Period. So what went wrong? Well, here in my opinion is basically everything that went wrong with this main event for WrestleMania 31. We'll start off with Roman Reigns because he is one of the participants. He is a part of the problem. There is no question about it. And there are several things that really went wrong for Roman Reigns in the WWE here that really, really made him seem like a bit of an odd fit for this main event at WrestleMania 31 at this time. First, you look at the fall and the late portion of 2014, suffering that hernia injury where he's just about really starting to get the crowd behind him. He's really starting to gain some momentum. It's a critical time for his character, his development as a performer to take that next step to the point in time where you get to the 2015 Royal Rumble. He's going to be ready and the fans are going to accept it. Now he's out of action for three months. That was devastating to his character. That was devastating to the WWE. And no matter how much they tried to compensate for that, or in this case, didn't compensate for that, you know, that injury was poorly timed. It was terrible timing for all parties involved. And then once you bring Roman Reigns back in December, for some inexplicable reason, we decide to make him a freaking walkie cartoon character, talking about suffering, succotash, and all this other hot garbage bullshit. Now, here's a guy that you're expecting the fans to take seriously. Here's a guy that you're trying to trot out there as the future of the WWE. Here is a guy that you're potentially getting ready to face, the freaking beast Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania, and you've got him talking about suffering succotash. Somebody along the way thought that this was a great idea. Somebody along the way thought that this was the best way to get a guy over. Somebody thought along the way that this was the best way to get a guy prepared for a main event push was to have him talking about Jack and the Giant Beanstalk and freaking suffering suck attach. And then when you look at Roman Reigns himself, you have to seriously question whether or not he has a skill set at this time to be put into this type of spot. Because while he does have an intense look that the ladies love, and he's a good guy so the kids are automatically going to like him, here's a guy that is far from a complete performer who is very lacking in the mic skills department with at least, if nothing else, the ability to put over what he needs to put over with his promos. Furthermore, he doesn't exactly have that overt jump out and grab you by the testicles type of charisma. 
It's not saying he doesn't have the ability to connect. doesn't mean that he wouldn't be able to connect. But when you take away that critical time that he missed due to injury, combining that with the fact that you had him take this ridiculous cartoonish turn between TLC and Royal Rumble, and it's not hard to see why this push for Roman Reigns having him win the Rumble and going forward has ended up being such a freaking abortion and disaster. But there's more. The WWE had to know that they were going in this direction. As a result, they had to know that you had Daniel Bryan out all this time. They had to know that bringing him back in time for the Royal Rumble would create a monster. It would create a problem and a very significant one. Why would you sit there and do this? What? To sit there and try and send a message? You sent no message other than the fact that you're totally and fucking out of touch and completely and totally idiotic and stupid. You had to know the hardcore fans were going to piss and whine and throw a bitch fit if their hero, Daniel Bryan, didn't get into this year's Royal Rumble and win this year's Royal Rumble. So why even make that a possibility? Why even make that an option? Why not wait until after the Royal Rumble to bring back Daniel Bryan, especially knowing that you weren't going to go with Daniel Bryan in a big way come WrestleMania season, as we've clearly fucking seen. You bring back Daniel Bryan and you just gum up the works and screw up every fucking thing. And then on top of that, to compound matters and make it worse, all of a sudden you decide, post the Royal Rumble, that you've got to have Roman Reigns feud with Daniel Bryan. And what happens here, the dynamics of this feud actually kind of work a little bit. But they kind of backfires and it doesn't work the way it should because now it gets to the point where when you get to Fastlane and Roman Reigns and Daniel Bryan, I actually want to see more of this feud, and I want to see this be a match at WrestleMania. Not Daniel Bryan versus a Brock Lesnar or Roman Reigns versus a Brock Lesnar. I want to see Roman Reigns versus Daniel Bryan. And now you're sitting there, and you're trying to get out in front of something that you should have avoided to begin with. You should have been creative enough to understand the problem. You should have been in tune and in touch enough, knowing what happened freaking last year, so it shouldn't have surprised the WWE to know what could possibly happen, and as a result, be able to creatively construct ways to avoid it from being a problem to begin with. And instead, they freaking went there, and then they went all balls deep with it. They fucking just went with Roman Reigns versus Daniel Bryan. And they're expecting the Daniel Bryan fans to hop on board with Roman Reigns after you basically teased him and said if Daniel Bryan could beat Roman Reigns, he'll get Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. And so many people thought that would be a great fucking WrestleMania match. Holy shit. And we wonder why there are problems with this WrestleMania 31 main event. Oh, but wait, there's more. Let's get to the real problem with it. And that starts with Brock Lesnar. For all the shit people want to talk about Roman Reigns, for all the shit people want to talk about him and his promos and his this and his that and the rocket shit push. Here's the guy that going way back in the day got a bigger rocket shit push than Roman Reigns could ever fucking imagine. And now you sit there, over the past year you had him dismantle the big show at the 2014 Royal Rumble. You had him end the fucking streak at WrestleMania 30, which should have him nuclear type of electric heat more than maybe anybody in the history of the business not named Vince McMahon should have. And you decide, for some particular reason, to sit there and fucking turn him babyface, which is exactly what I told you was gonna fucking happen at SummerSlam by having him dismantle and destroy John Cena. The only way the dynamics of this shit would fucking work with Brock Lesnar being a part-time champion and carrying the strap into Mania is that he had to stay heel and he had to be a villain. And the only way to keep him a villain is to have him do villainous things. By having him sit there and go out there and squash the hatred, or the hated one for so many hardcore fans of John Cena, just got him adored. It got him loved. It got him admired. People thought this was cool. This was great. It was anything but that. It was fucking stupid. Now, a few months after this guy ends the streak of the man at WrestleMania and The Undertaker, the real Mr. WrestleMania, now we come around and we've given people all types of reasons to cheer him because now he's fucking squashed John Cena at SummerSlam and that's fucking cool. Yeah. And then we follow it up with that bullshit finish at Night of Champions. And now you've done exactly what I told you was going to fucking happen if you did it this way. By having Brock Lesnar be such a part-time champion and waiting literally months in between appearances, you take the guy from being a special attraction where maybe he appears twice to three times a month or, you know, occasionally to being no attraction because he's not there so you really don't mention that you have nothing going on with him so people forget about it to the fact where when he does come back, he's the wrong type of fucking attraction because, again, if he didn't already cement it at SummerSlam with that ridiculous booking decision of having him go 
over John Cena the way he fucking did. Now the people are happy to see the guy that ended the fucking streak at WrestleMania 30. And again, this was supposed to work. And again, this is supposed to be anything other than the drizzling shits. And again, that's all the fault of just Roman Reigns, right? No! The whole dynamics of this were supposed to work as such. Brock Lesnar was supposed to be the dominant villain. He was supposed to be the guy that everybody hated. They're supposed to be still able to maintain anger from the year before with what he did to The Undertaker at WrestleMania 30. And then somebody was supposed to write in on the noble steed, the white stallion, be that shining knight to save the day for the WWE. It's basic bullshit that the WWE fucked up. But there's more. It's not even just about Brock Lesnar. It's about Paul Heyman, too. These repetitive promos... Grab mic, open mouth, work shoot, why a little repeat. It's the same format. It's the same fucking shit every week. Whether it's good or not, at the some point in time, it does get repetitive. At some point in time, it's not getting the job done. And Paul Heyman is supposed to be the greatest fucking manager of all time, according to some delusional fucks. Yeah, he can't get you to give a shit about this match at WrestleMania 31. Now, maybe Paul Heyman's being dealt a bad hand, and I don't completely disagree with that assertion. But at the end of the day, if Paul Heyman as a manager was so star-spangled fucking awesome, and this guy was supposed to be the greatest thing of all time, up yours, Jimmy Hart, and screw you, Bobby the Brain Heenan, then he should have been able to do a better job of redirecting the narrative, making people hate Brock Lesnar, not cheer him, making people cheer Roman Reigns, not booing him, and he should have gotten this fucking match over at WrestleMania 31! Don't you dare sit there and tell me that Paul Heyman isn't a part of the problem. He's a big part of the problem, just like all people involved are. But perhaps the biggest, most ridiculous thing about all of this is not just Roman Reigns getting this spot when maybe arguably he wasn't ready. It's not just the fact that they didn't avoid the Daniel Bryan problem. They sat there and went face first into it and then dove into that muff some fucking war because they hadn't learned the lesson. It's not just the fact that Brock Lesnar isn't around, and when he does show up, you're given reasons to like him, not to hate him. And again, if the guy can't be bothered to show up when he's the champion heading into the most important show of the year, then why the fuck should people care about it? And then on top of the fact you've got the guy, the advocate, the spokesman, who's supposed to be so star-spangled awesome, but he can't get this shit over anyone to fart in church. It's the ridiculous thing that for the WWE... As much as they're supposed to love their muscle-bound steroid freaks, as much as they're supposed to be big-time muscle marks, they forgot how to book fucking monsters. You look at Roman Reigns. Look at him. You look at Brock Lesnar. Seriously, look at this square-headed motherfucker. Is it really that hard? It can't be. Like, even when you look at the night after the Royal Rumble, they had that whole thing... There's Roman Reigns, there's Brock Lesnar, that was good shit. It's like, yeah, man, go with this for two months. You give us this type of stuff, this could work. But no, they decided to go in a ding-dong-dum-dick direction and have him feud with fucking Daniel Bryan. And then Brock Lesnar, of course, isn't going to bother to fucking show up, because why would he? It's not like he's the champion with the most important title heading into the most important show of the fucking year. Why would he want to be around for this shit? It's the ridiculous thing that they can't even book the fucking monsters anymore. You've got Brock Lesnar, NCAA heavyweight champion, multiple-time world champion in the WWE, UFC champion, and I don't believe I've seen one fucking workout package or vignette from this asshole the entire time he's been champion, or at least that's the Royal Rumble. You're heading into the biggest match of the year. You did this shit with freaking Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart, and they most certainly were big-time monsters. How the fuck can you not get this right? Remember heading into SummerSlam 2002? One of the big packages they had were Brock doing his big workouts with the freaking tree stumps and shit, and then you had The Rock doing the, the jumps on the steps and everything else. That's a way to get people excited. That's a way to compensate for the fact that Brock Lesnar isn't fucking there. So instead of compensating for the fact that Brock Lesnar isn't fucking there, the WWE seems to want to emphasize that Brock Lesnar isn't fucking there. Instead of having Roman Reigns sit there and say, you know, I've done this and I've done that. I've been a part of this dominant faction, The Shield. I dominated the 2014 Royal Rumble. I won the 2015 Royal Rumble. But holy shit, man, that's Brock fucking Lesnar. And I got to work my ass off more than I ever had. And then spending the next two months showing packages of him working out like a fucking monster. 
getting people to buy into him, to believe in him, that he could actually go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Brock Lesnar. You do this bullshit that you've done with him by having a feud with Daniel fucking Bryan. And then Brock Lesnar, you can sit there and even do the video training packages with him, saying he went away to train because that's what he wants to fucking do. Because he doesn't need to train for Roman Reigns to beat him. He wants to train for Roman Reigns at WrestleMania because he wants to have the most dominant performance in a main event in WWE WrestleMania history. There are so many different dynamics. You could have sat there and had Roman Reigns bump into Brock Lesnar at a gym or Brock Lesnar bump into Roman Reigns as a gym. Part of the whole reason you went with this is because it was one big guy versus another big guy, so fucking emphasize it. And to the whole notion that Daniel Bryan versus Brock Lesnar would be so much better, pound it up your fucking ass. They can't even book Daniel Bryan like he matters at all for the fucking IC title, but they were going to magically do that for the fucking world title? If you have any delusions at all that this shit would have been any fucking better with Daniel Bryan in this position, you are joking. You are kidding yourself. Because again, just like Roman Reigns isn't the only problem with this main event at WrestleMania 31, Daniel Bryan wouldn't have been the only solution. It wouldn't even have been a solution at all. Imagine this seriously. Daniel Bryan is damn near my size. Would any of you take that shit seriously if I was facing Brock Lesnar straight up in a street fight? And even let's say I was an accomplished like Golden Gloves boxer. I was an established badass dude. Are you really going to think that I can beat this type of fucking dude, an NCAA heavyweight champion, a fucking UFC champion? No, you're going to think no matter what my accomplishments or my skills or my background that I'm about to get my shit pushed in by this guy that weighs almost 100 pounds more than me and is even more powerful, strong, and athletic than me. Because size does matter. And this whole David versus Goliath bullshit fantasy world that so many people want to live in is just that, a bullshit fantasy world. If Daniel Bryan was facing Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania, it would be every bit as trashy, every bit as garbage, every bit as a joke as Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar is. Because again, Roman Reigns isn't the only fucking problem. He is a part of the problem, as I will establish here and have established here and have talked about before. But he's not the only one. Because at the end of the day, who's to say that the WWE could have done anything fucking right with Daniel Bryan anyways? They couldn't get it right with Brock Lesnar. They couldn't get it right with Roman Reigns. So what makes you think things would be so magically different with Daniel Bryan? Because look at how the fuck they're booking him now. How can anything get over in today's WWE toxic wasteland of a creative environment? How can anything work with this bullshit? Think about how ridiculous this is. You have waited two months to have a face-off. Between Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns, you had the one the night after Royal Rumble, but then you didn't really go back to it. Now here we are. You finally have your closing segment on your go-home show before your biggest show of the fucking year. And somebody named Vince McMahon decides that the best way to really send a message and really get the people stoked up and really get this shit off the ground is to have a fucking tug of war over the title. No, it's mine. No, it's mine. We're on this third grade bullshit. How could anything other than colossally suck be a result of anything like that? They had a fucking tug of war over a toy. A toy. A tug of war. But I suppose that's all Roman Reigns' fault. Right? And I'm sure it would have been so much better with Dan O'Brien as a fucking guy. No, if anything, the biggest problems with this are threefold. It's number one, that they didn't have anybody really ready for this spot at WrestleMania. Roman Reigns, Daniel Bryan, or any of the other fucks on top of it. Number two is the fact that Brock Lesnar's gone so much, he goes from special attraction to no attraction to when he does come back, in part because of what the WWE's dumb dick asses do, becomes the wrong type of attraction, and it sabotages everything and becomes a complete fucking disaster. And then number three is that the WWE doesn't know what the fuck they're doing. They can't even book monsters right. The company that supposedly loves the muscles so damn much can't even book muscles anymore. Of all the shit you could have done to build up the excitement and interest level for Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar, you decided the best effort you could put forward was a fucking tug of war third grade style over a goddamn toy. Again, there are so many problems with this main event at WrestleMania 31. <laughs> Don't say I didn't try to warn you.
because I could see it coming. The only solution they have is one of two things. Number one, realizing how much of a fucking disaster this is going to be and putting something like Sting versus Triple H in the main event. Number two, they have to go with the main event that I said months ago needed to happen, and that was to have Seth Rollins close out the night by cashing in and becoming the WWE World Heavyweight Champion. Because having Brock Lesnar win would be fucking stupid, whether they resign him or not. Fucking Brock Lesnar needs to go away because they haven't gotten anything from him. I'm sorry, it's true. Having Roman Reigns win this title at this point in time is not the right decision. It would be disastrous for him and disastrous for the company. It would just be an indication of so many different problems. They only have one option. There's only one guy that can walk out the champion at the end of WrestleMania 31. And my money, for my mind, it has to be Seth Rollins. But that's what I've been telling you for a couple of months now.